In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, good afternoon and welcome to our Mass today as we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, if only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command I enjoin on you today is not mysterious and remote to you. It is not up in the sky 
that you should say, who will go up in the sky and get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No. It is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things 
for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your might, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to, go, to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levi came to the place and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was the neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning in Sacred Heart Cathedral, seven men were ordained as permanent deacons for our diocese. So it was an important event, uh, not only for the diocese, but also for all parishes, including ours. And that is because our church, uh, with a capital C, meaning the, the diocesan church, the universal church, now has seven more men who can go out and serve God and others as deacons. Oh, and what do deacons do? Well, they do many things. They can perform baptisms. They can receive the consent of a couple who is getting married. Um, they can preach a homily. Uh, they can minister 
to those who are sick you know, by bringing them communion in the hospitals or at home. They can visit those who are in prison you know, and many other things, you know, depending on their skills. You know. The only thing that they cannot do is uh, celebrate Mass and uh, celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation and anointing of the sick. You know, other than that, all the other uh, ministries uh, they can do. So this is a great benefit for our church uh, because we are the one body of Christ. Even though of those seven men, only one will be serving here. Uh, and that's because he's, he's been assigned here. And he is also one of our parishioners, uh, Mr. Angel Hernandez. So some of you might know him. Uh, so he has been studying to be a permanent deacon for the past seven years. Uh, so now, finally, you know, he's been ordained. Uh, thanks be to God for that. And he will be serving here in our parish. You know, sometimes a deacon, even though he is from a certain parish, he can be assigned to another parish. Uh, but we are blessed that we will have uh, Deacon Angel uh, serving us. So you might already know, or you're familiar with Deacon Mitch Halty. Uh, he, his home parish is uh, in Solon, St. Mary Solon but he helps us out here once a month. And then now we will also have uh, Deacon Angel. Uh, so that is a great gift that we have. One of the parts that I like in the ordination of the deacon is called the handing on of the book of the Gospels. So this is where the man to be ordained kneels in front of the bishop who is in front you know, and, and everybody can see them. So the bishop is seated, and then the man kneels in front of him, and then the bishop gives him the book of the Gospels. So the book of the Gospels is this book, right? From which we proclaim the Gospels. So in the rite of ordination of a deacon, he is presented the book of the Gospels. And then the bishop says to him, receive the Gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Yeah. So that always calls my attention every time I hear that. Uh, first of all, because it's a play on words. Uh, believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Uh, there's a certain repetition there, uh, a certain you know, parallelism among the words. But more importantly, I like these words because I think they're important, you know, not just for a deacon, but I think for all of us. You know, it's important for us to believe what we read in the book of the Gospels. And what do we read in the book of the Gospels? Well, it's the Word of God. It is the truth of God. And what is true is life-giving. You know, because what is not true a lie is what causes death. You know, but something that is true, it brings life. And we are called to believe only in the truth of God, uh, not to believe in anything else. And even though we might not understand it completely or might not know the reason why, you know, it is important for us to keep learning about it. Uh, why? Why does the gospel say that? Why does our church teach that? Uh, so it's important to, to learn uh, in the context of tradition and our magisterium. Right? And then once we believe in it, once we are so convicted in what the gospel says, then we are to teach that to others, to teach what you believe, uh, because you know it is true, and you want others to come to the truth. And then practice what you teach. So that is the hard part. In today's first reading, Moses says, uh, um, as regards the Word of God, uh, the Word of God, the command of God, is not too mysterious nor remote for you. No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. Uh, so in other words, practice what you teach. And what you are teaching is what you believe. Uh, so practice what you believe, uh, the Word of God. So we have an example of that in today's Gospel, in this story of the Good Samaritan, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, towards the end, this um, 
the man who asked the question, you know, who is my neighbor, uh, he doesn't get his answer directly from Jesus Christ, but rather Jesus gave him this story of how a man had fallen to robbers and was beaten almost to death. And of the three people who came, only one helped him, the Samaritan. And the Samaritan was, well, the Samaritans were the enemies of the Jews. Uh, but in this story, Jesus points out that it was the enemy who helped the Jew. Uh, so in other words, this is a reiteration of Jesus' teaching, love your enemy, do good to those who hate you. So that is the word of God, that is the gospel. So now, do you believe that? Eh? And if so, do you teach that? And do you practice what you teach by your own example? So you know, this is a good, a good passage for us to reflect on uh, in terms of that admonition from the bishop uh, to believe, to teach, and to practice what we believe. So one way that we can indeed love our enemy is to know their story. That's what Jesus does so in today's gospel. Instead of directly answering this scholar of the law, he gives him a story. And then in the end, he answers correctly. Although if you notice this one detail, when Jesus asked him, so which of these three is the neighbor? Uh, so the scholar answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Uh, he couldn't even say the Samaritan because they were enemies. Uh, that's how divided they were. Uh, this Jew couldn't say the Samaritan was the good guy in this story. No, uh, he only said, the one who treated him with mercy. Uh, but that's the point. The point is, yes, he, he got the answer right uh, through the story that Jesus gave. So in the same way, if we want to love our enemies, it's important for us to know their story, to know why, why they are doing that. You know, not to justify it, not to, not to excuse it, or to say, well, yeah, that's, that's all right. No, uh, but rather to understand why they're doing it, you know, what is their story. And then we can act with more compassion and mercy and love. Uh, because then we realize that we have that love of God in us and we can understand our neighbor and even our enemy and we can come to love them. All right? So I leave you with those words to reflect on for this week. Receive the gospel of Christ uh, believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We trust in God's providence, so we turn to him now and offer our prayers. That leaders and followers in the church bear witness to love of neighbor as did the Good Samaritan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders work together for peace and assist victims of war and strife, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That individuals and communities treat the earth gently and preserve its beauty and richness for future generations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people have access to affordable health care, education, and housing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of this church welcome the stranger, shelter the homeless, and build a community of love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Eldon Wise, whom we remember in a special way at today's Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the personal intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we conclude with a prayer for the Jubilee year. Loving God, we celebrate 150 years of Catholic faith as St. Patrick Parish, Iowa City, and we offer you thanks and praise. We gratefully acknowledge those who came before us and established our parish. May we follow their example of evangelization as we commit ourselves to the task of sharing your love to all we encounter. May your spirit guide us. May the Blessed Virgin intercede for us. And may our patron, St. Patrick, inspire us to arise today from all trials and temptations to your mighty strength. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, now and forever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is These Alone Are Enough, number 397. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I mentioned about Deacon Angel, who was ordained today. Tomorrow, our parish will host a reception for him 
at 1.15 p.m. in the social hall. So everyone's invited if you want to get to know him and greet him uh, as he received, as he is now a newly ordained a deacon for our parish. And then next Saturday, July 16, our youth group will be having a car wash, so during and after the 4.30 Mass. All right, so if you want to have your car wash, you can just uh, drop it off over here. There's a semi-circle driveway here by the rectory, and they will do the car wash you know, during and also after the 4.30 Mass next Saturday. And then our Totus Tua summer program is happening the last week of July. This is for um, children elementary and also junior and high school, uh, junior and senior high school students, right? More information in the bulletin. Please take a bulletin today. We have a lot of uh, information in our bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing The Spirit Sends Us Forth, number 391. 